We place our humble mother yet on God. I pray, God, as she, as she stands, as she stands in your presence. I pray, God, the Holy Spirit, my God, will minister to her as she opens her mouth this morning. I pray, God, that you will fill it with words. I pray, God, that your anointing will flow upon her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray you will consecrate her eyes. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will cleanse her this morning from the ground of her head to the sole of her feet. And use her for your glory in the name of Jesus. We say, Go out for the praise and worship. Father God, this morning I be used, but your right said I call upon you when you are strong. Mighty God of Israel, your right said I, mighty God, forget not your savior in the day of your youth. So as they stand this morning to glorify you, God, I pray this morning that the spirit of David will come upon him in the name of Jesus. The spirit of praise. This morning will come upon them in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, they will praise you this morning from way down in their belly. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your spirit of praise will fill their mouths in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God. As in uh, God, as this morning, the speaker come this morning, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, mighty God of Israel, that you will anoint her. In the name of Jesus, I you whoever this morning anoint them. In the name of Jesus Christ, as they, mighty God, put forth your word. Mighty God, your word is already anointed, but we pray for a double portion. So, mighty God, it will come, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Your word will convict, your word will arrest, your word will save soul. Your word this morning, mighty God, will let demons tremble. Your word this morning, mighty God, will cause us to take a second turn and look at ourselves in the name of Jesus. Your word this morning, mighty God, mighty God, will draw us closer to you this morning in the name of Jesus. So anoint her afresh in the name of Jesus. Anoint her afresh in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anoint every word afresh in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the spirit of boldness this morning be upon her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God, let there not be a spirit of fear, nor a spirit of doubt, but she will speak thus said the Lord God of hosts. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mighty God, we put them in your hands. You are God. We put our pastor in your hands. We put his family in your hands. We put each and every one of us this morning in your hands, God. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we put members, we put visitors, we put us all in your cure this morning because you cure it for us. So this morning, God, anoint us of our fish. When we leave here this morning, let us say it was good for us to go into the presence of God. So this morning, God, have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way and let self this morning. Let self be slain. Let self be slain. Let self be slain this morning and God will be glorified because it's all about you. It is all about you, Jesus. It is all about you this morning. So let self be seen in the name of Jesus Christ. Cleanse us afresh this morning in the name of Jesus. Sanctify us this morning. Purify us this morning. Justify us this morning. And mighty God, glorify us. You are God. You are God this morning. We give you the glory. We give you the praise and we leave the rest of mighty God and all of the sermon and everybody who will be participating in the name of Jesus. We put them in your care. Let your will be done on earth concerning mighty God, your children this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Let us all say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it up? A pleasure and a privilege to be in God's house this morning. Amen. 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 To be worshiping and expressing our praise. We do it at home, you know, but it feels good when we're here in the sanctuary, you know, together on one accord. Let me officially say good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning to our host, Pastor Reverend Senate Baker and First Lady Baker. I'm not sure she's online. Okay, good morning, First Lady Baker. Hope you're doing well. And to their beautiful daughters, and of course, brethren, one and all, and our online viewers. Today is Youth Sunday, and we just want to lift up the mighty name of God. We're happy to be here in the sanctuary. We're happy for those who are online viewing. And we hope that we will be able to see you soon. We know online is convenient, your home, not able to be here, but we'd also love to see you in the sanctuary and to fellowship with us. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Our theme, our theme this morning is trusting God in every situation. That's almost an everyday thing, right? Just by waking up and stepping out of the house to go on the road, you have to trust God. Because you have to pray and say, Lord, cover your blood over me. Cover whatever my proceedings are for the day and take me back home safely. And even when you're home, you have to be covering yourself and your family and trusting God. So today my theme is trusting God in every situation. And I will just touch a little point here and there as we go throughout the service. I hope you are blessed. Okay? The trust is to believe in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of something. So when it comes to trusting God, that means believing in His reliability, His word, His ability, and His strength. The Bible says that God cannot lie, and He will never ever lie. That He always keeps His promises, that He loves you and has good in store for you. Amen? Trusting in, him, trusting in him means believing what he says about himself, about the world, and about you is true. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 tells us that, and you can repeat it with me, please. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You know, this morning I have to give God thanks coming to church. It was much brighter, much sunnier, but we still give God thanks despite everything. You know, there are persons who are living in Spanish town now, they're keeping abreast of the news. Call it war going on down there, you know, because of violence and all of that. Can you imagine persons who perhaps wanted to go out to church this morning and they're restricted? They have to stay in home and hoping that their church have online. But nonetheless, they may want to um, have freedom of movement, and that is limited for them because of violence. So even just us in our community, New Green, Mandible, we're able to move freely. We have to give God thanks for that. You know, we're able to come out at whatever time you said. So they said that you'll be home 9.30 this morning, or 9.45, or 10 o'clock, depending on where you live, and you've got here safely. And that was you trusting God to get you here at church. Am I right? Yeah. Amen, amen. So let us just keep those persons in prayer. You know, they said, um, today, for you, tomorrow, for me, we are not pronouncing any violence, but it is what it is, and we know what the Bible says, and we are well aware that we have to keep ourselves covered, keep our community covered, keep our nation covered. Uh, amen? Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to call our dear, dear sister, Angela Anderson. She is going to give us the scripture reading, read the scripture reading for us. It is Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18. Please find it in your Bible in the meantime. It's Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18. It's pleasant morning, everyone. Our text is taken from Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18. I read while you listen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. 
Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, sorry, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 18. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I want to read that again. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. This is the word of the Lord be honored by saying, Thanks be to God. Jesus. We call the praise and worship team. Let us just remain in the act of worship. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Can we all stand? Let us get into an attitude of worship. Before we even begin, let us reflect on the week that has passed. And what the Lord has brought you through. Just let us give him thanks and praise for taking us through another week and continuing us here safely. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. We worship you. We give our thanks, Lord. We pray for the Holy Name. We thank you. 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 God, we are going to make this a new life, oh God, and we are going to move into the first oh God, we ask you that your spirit will be with us, Heavenly Father. The Lord will come up to us, Heavenly Father. Come down, Heavenly Father, and stop with us, Heavenly Father. We ask you, oh God, that you take control of this service right now. We ask you, oh God, that you will be the meat of us right now, oh God. Tell the Lord. To not worship you and to lift you up, oh God, because they know that you, oh God. As we worship at this time of God, we ask you that you're coming to give us hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Give myself away. 
The trust in God in happiness. The Bible reminds us that true happiness comes from our faith and love for God. So if you really love him no matter what's going on, you trust him and you lift him up. Amen? Amen. Psalms 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Let me say that again. Psalm 37 verse 4, if you want to note it. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. We now officially have the welcome, and the welcome will be done by yours truly and our youth president, Anthony McKenzie. Please give him a hand. Well, a mixture. It's gonna be. It's gonna involve some activity from you guys. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Anthony, are you president? Before he comes to welcome you all, he's going to go around and present this box to you. You're gonna take a card. Randomly, any card. So, if you want to take it from the back, from the middle, from the front, it's up to you. Take a card and hold it. You can read it in the meantime. Soak in the message. It, sh it should be a message of blessing. And, but don't put it in your bag, that's it, okay? Don't put it away, just hold it and keep it in your hand. Amen? <clears throat> the juicy part is coming up next. Okay. <laughs> so he's handing out, he's handing out the arms. Um, right. And in the meantime, please pick someone Pick a partner. So just move to that person, just stand next to the person and pick a partner in the meantime, just to speed things up. So he's handing out the cards, but listen to your spirit, look around and pick somebody that you want to just be close to at this present moment. Afterwards, you'll go back to your seat. All right? Pastor, can I be near to you? Okay, all right. Pastor is nine. Remember, don't be anxious. Trust God, right? Okay. So it's no hard activity you will enjoy. It's an action where the juice is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother can we hear something on keys in the meantime, please? Thank you. You can read your card in the meantime. Look at the message. We're almost through. We only have one side left. Has everyone picked their partner as yet? It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as I have my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have his hands to hold, as long as he watches over my soul, as long as I'm under his control.
serious question. See, you want to look them square in the eyes. Serious question, but don't, don't look too serious, but you know. But you're going to say to them and repeat after me. I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. But I came to praise the Lord. All right, so let's see you know. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So ask the question seriously, you know. See, like I said, Pastor, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Okay, so you're going to switch your card with your partner, give them a hug, and tell them that I'm going to pray for you this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So here's our youth president, Brother Anthony Mackenzie. Give us a Good morning, church. Good morning. You know, so when I come up here, I said, Good morning. You know, Sahib, you could not have a parent, but Sunday. So, good morning, church. Good morning. Let me see. Um, let us stand to our feet as we welcome the Most High in this place. We would like to welcome Pastor and his family. She's a baker here at our space. We want to welcome each and every one of you, as without you, your space will be empty. Amen. Is there any first time visitor visiting with us today? No? So, turn to your neighbor like a sister Alice and said, keep that person in mind as you go throughout this week. Pray for what? Pray for them. At this time, I'll hand over back to our moderator as she continues to be safe. Trusting God in sorrow. Praying will build your faith and help you to keep your eyes and heart focused and stay on God. Go to the Lord in prayer and just lay your burdens before Him. He already knows our thoughts. He has searched us and knows us. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to realize again. Trusting God in sorrow. I believe it is ministered to me. I hope it ministered to you. Praying will build your faith and help you to keep your eyes and heart focused and stayed on God. Amen. Go to the Lord in prayer and just lay your burdens before Him. Amen. He already knows our thoughts. He has searched us and He knows us. Amen. Amen. I know invite Sister Joshan Baker. She will be delivering the notices and announcements. Please clap her while she comes. Let us pray. More trust and turn on Father Lord. I thank God for this day, Lord. I thank God for this offering that I'm going to come. 
I'm trying to keep the person to my interest. I try the best to work on the key while I work with my type to keep, but I'm still on the standby. I accept the best rates on the service and the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it will come back to you. Put that on the press down, shake it together and run it over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. Oh, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and Running over again, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. Oh, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and running over again, and it will come back to you. When you give, Saturday 7 a.m. early morning prayer meeting, Sunday at 9.30 Sunday school and at 10.30 divine worship. Other announcements, CTS continues its offer of short courses online for the month February to December 2024. Interested persons may speak with the pastor. Please remember our long anticipated children's Bible club, which will begin this Saturday, April 27th, time 1 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Right here at Olivet. This will be an interesting event for our children and will see the start of a beautiful experience for them. This will be an ongoing event taking place on, a, on the last Saturday of each month. Please send out your children and invite your neighbor's children also. Refreshments will be served. Also, on Saturday, April 27th, music class will commence with instructor Earl Bobby Welch. Persons who are desirous of playing the keyboard and drums may speak with Sister Cole. Our congregation is being invited to participate in a health and wellness fair being put on by the New Green Baptist Church. This will take place on May 4, starting at 8, 8 a.m. Persons will be seen on a first-come, first-served basis. Please continue to pray for our national and church leaders, our nation's children, our communities, and those who are sick, like Sister Bonnie, Sister Evelyn Palmer. Please remember those who are grieving the loss of your loved ones. Say an encouraging word or give a hope. And we'll also remind you about the station upstairs for a tea if you if you feel upset and you need a tea, you can go downstairs. There's a little table right here for you to actually just stand to drink your tea. These are your announcements. Thanks for listening and God bless you all. Okay. Thank you, Sister Tanti. Um, I don't see any question and I'm so sorry. Sister Antia wants to meet all youths after this service. Okay. All the, all the young people and the ages of a number, 
So I was so happy when Pastor put me on my youth service, you know, my youth Sunday. I was like, put me. Pastor still feeling me. That's so nice. Yes, man. I was so good. I was so feeling good. I was like, yeah, right. So give God thanks, right? In everything, we give him thanks. So, young people, Sister Ajay, want to see you right after this service. Um, I feel led to ask for a testimony. We're talking about trusting God. I don't know if anybody have a little burning story, very short, that they want to share just how they had to trust God in a unforeseen circumstances. Maybe a situation you just never knew you were going to get out of or how, how the way was going to be made. Um, please feel free to share real, real quick. I'm just going to make one more point about trusting God and the floor is yours. Trusting God in fear or, un or uncertainty. Allow God to remind you who he is and what he promises. And then be honest with him. One of the best ways of trusting God in uncertainty is remaining in the present moment. Yet too often we run headlong into the future, driven by our fears. While God was with us in the past and will be with us in the future, the present moment remains the only place we experience his manifest presence. Amen? Amen. So you have God know you're in the present moment. Whatever it is that you're anxious about, that you have fear or uncertainty, just trust God. Amen? Amen. Give to someone, please. No, I want to share a testimony. It's not mine. Okay. Well, this is our first testimony. Thank God. Good morning, everyone. It is not my testimony. I was asked to share it. So last week, when we we had a, a word from the Lord that says somebody's documents um, will be removed from the bottom to the top, and the following day, somebody, the person said they were calling, and you remember that part of the word was that you shouldn't call, they will call you. The following day, they called the person. Her documents were removed from the bottom to the top, and they called her. And so when she shared it with me, I said, my God, you are very answering God. Awesome. So let's give God back. Give him praise. He is worthy to be praised. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Would like to share a testimony? Trusting God. Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we bless the Lord? Praise the Lord. Um, I really had to give this testimony because last week I was just hoping that you know, somebody would say, you know, who wants to give a testimony? Because, you know, I was going to work last Sunday afternoon, so I had to leave out before the word. But God knows, the, the Saturday night, I was down on my knees. And when I get to God, I said, God, I've talked to you. I want you to say something to me. And he led me over to St. Luke chapter 12. And in that chapter, one of the, one of the heading was, don't worry. And when I hear little Christian went up and gave that message, I was sitting here and I said, God, a child was able, because what was she was saying, she said whatever she had, she composed it. And even though she may have preparation, but just to have that word to remind me, yeah. don't worry. And I held on to that word, people of God. And I went to work that day. And so many things take place in that one afternoon that all I have to do is to stand on the word, don't worry. And when you read that word, it was said, he said, take no thought for your life. We are here today and we are so much sitting there be going. We are done in Friday already and we don't even reach Monday. We have to be real. So many things we don't even know what this afternoon holds. But God is saying, take, take no thought for your life. He have it all under control. Don't worry. 
It's hard to say, but when you allow the word to come alive in you, it's what God says. And he said, my word. He said, before one of my word pass, heaven and earth will pass. I am saying this to say that you are reinforcing the word. Don't worry. When the, your back is against the wall tomorrow morning, remember, God says, don't worry. Because he might be under control. Because he said, look here. If you worry, you're not going to do anything, people of God. That's what he's saying, you know, your worry, all it's going to be probably uh, set up high blood pressure, low yeah. blood pressure. You know the things that will develop. And he's saying to us today, don't worry. Cast your cares on me because I care for you. When you face your tomorrow and the difficulties and the problems and everything will come, remember, God said in his word, don't Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Christian. I am going to hug you after, after church because you speak a word in me that take me through the week. And God bless you as you continue to minister. And I pray that all the other children here will follow your footsteps because I'm going to watch you one day soon follow the Lord in water baptism because you are already saved and God already appointed you a minister. In the name of Jesus, we praise God for her. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Testimony? It's a piece that would like to give a short testimony. So, um, it was out last week, Wednesday, I was at school and I ate my break, I ate and I threw up for some reason. Then it was lunch time. I ate my party and then I threw up again. So and when I went to nurse, nurse called daddy. And daddy said that he's not going to take me home because he don't have no space in the car and that I have to stay at school. And then, nurse gave me some tea, and then school was over, then I went to my coding class, I felt better, and then the following day, there was no sickness. And I believe that that is a sign from God. <laughs> Anybody else have any testimony of a situation where you had to just put on that extra trust? Well, mine real quick is that um, I had a particular business to take care of. Um, and uh, I decided to tackle it in December of last year. So I called the service provider and I, you know, find out what is the procedures, um, you know, what do I have to do and so on. And of course the cost, has nothing to read on. Oh boy. And to my surprise, it was a pretty song that I really didn't want to hear. But she said, that is it. And I said, well, you have to give me some time to save and, you know, to prepare myself for that. And I maxed out my months and I said, oh boy, so I sacrificed this, I did this, and put it all together. When I was eventually ready, sometime in March, I sent her a text message. So it's a lady. I sent her a text message and it bounced back to say she's out of office and she will not be in until the ending of March. I was very disappointed, but I said, you know, I'm not gonna go to anyone else, so I was allow time to go, have patience, the Lord knows best, right? When she got back in office, she messaged me, and I told her I would see her in the week. Then she called me like the day I was supposed to go, and she says, you know what? That money, you don't have to pay it. Whatever that you're doing, you just go, cause, and she told me that she called, like I had to go to about three different places to get the matter done. She said she called all three places to find out that when I come with my documents and so on and so on, it is free of course, I will get that done and get that done and get that done. And I said, are you sure? And she said, I take up the phone and I call them myself so that you wouldn't have to call and check it out for yourself. And I said, that could only be God. Amen. That could only be God. Because I was feeling that I have to spend so much money 
just to get that service done. And I was saying, you know, there's so much other things to get done. But the Lord knows. The Lord knows what is happening. And he just said, you know, I'm going to leave you off this house. And I just want you to just trust God in whatever situations you're going through. It may be um, sadness, it may be happiness is still trusting, it may be uncertainty, fear, anxiety. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right, I'll ask Sister Hadian to come and bless our heart with a song. Amen. That's called purpose. You're alive for a reason. So don't forget it. What did I say? You are alive for a reason. So don't forget it. So you have to when your back is against the wall. You feel like the world is tumbling down on you. You feel like there's no way out. Continue to trust God. Continue to praise Him and continue to lift up His name. Hallelujah. I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything. I've lost faith in people who said they give in the time of my crisis they were never there but in my disappointment in my season of pain one thing never wavered one thing never changed I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything in the time of my crisis. I've lost faith in people who say their care. In the time of my crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered. One thing never changed, and I have lost my hope. Ooh. And I have lost my joy. And I have lost my faith. But most.
and I know that she has tarried and I just pray that the Lord will speak through her and you will be blessed and ministered as the Lord speak. Amen? Amen. 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 No other help do I know if thou should draw thyself from me. Where or whither shall I go? Remember me, remember me, Lord. Oh Lord, remember me. I am nothing without you, my God. I am empty without you, Lord. I'm just a mouthpiece. I'm just an empty vessel. I just have a voice and I long to breathe, but you will have to speak your word through me. You just have to minister your word through me, God, or I will just stand here like a mannequin saying nothing. Have your way today, God. Have your way this sanctuary. I pray that hearts will be receptive. I pray that hearts will be open. I pray that our eyes not just be for spectating, not just for looking, but for listening to God. Listen to God. Let your word become a real word today in the hearts of your people, mighty God. Bless the hearts of someone today, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. 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 I believe this word is coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. When I am asked to minister, I don't just think of a topic. I wait on the Lord. And from my name went down, I have been waiting. And when the week began, I said, God, you don't give me a word yet. Ask my sister, she and my sister, I said, I don't get a word yet. I don't get a word yet. And one night this week, I don't remember which night, earlier in the week, I could not sleep. I woke up about four to six times in the night. I said, what is this, God? What is this? The last time I woke up, it was about four, there about, and I lied down. I said, what is this? And I, down. I heard long-term commitment. Long, mighty doom. The brethren was right. Sister Ben, come and preach out her heart. Pastor, come and preach out his heart. Other believers, it will be brain, not that good to remember everything. Long term commitment. I said to him, believe me, I don't know where it comes from. I said, long term commitment, long term commitment, long term. I didn't want to forget. I want to get up and write it down. And I was there like the one I heard planning. The plan. It was the plan or planning. And I said, planning, planning, planning. And while I was there waiting, waiting, long term commitment, planning, because I am thinking it's referring to me, you know? And then I heard preparation. Preparation. And I repeated it I, in my thoughts. You don't want to lose it. And I heard perseverance. Those, this coming like three point sermon I hear pastor preach. I, I don't know, I didn't go to Bible school. But it coming like a three point sermon. Planning, preparation, perseverance. And the topic is long term commitment. When I heard it, I got up and I rushed quickly to my book. 
I didn't even have time to say good morning to Alice and Sam Rosie, Kali Romanto Pavetti, and I wrote it down. And I started studying, studying Dominic thoughts. I said, okay, you know the Bible, what scripture must I use to back this up? And I heard Ephesians 6. I could not relate Ephesians 6 to these three topics, but I wrote it down. When I prepared, start preparing, I was changing the scripture to Romans 12. When Sister Alisa asked me, she was sitting at the table, she said, what is the scripture for today? I heard in my spirit, Ephesians 6. I said, God, let me not disobey you. Ephesians 6. Brethren, Ephesians 6. She was at the table preparing. I was sitting in a chair. I was studying, but she didn't know what I was studying. Tell me if God loved me. I heard God say to my spirit, you must first give a testimony. I didn't say anything to her. It's the first she's hearing this. It's the first you're hearing this. You must first give a testimony. And I was just musing over my thoughts. And here are two. Mommy, my spirit is telling me to ask for some testimony. The very same minute you think I should ask, I said, let the spirit lead you. Do what the spirit says. And she didn't know that the Lord was speaking to me. I said, God, what kind of testimony am I going to give? And I am coming down. I don't know what I'm coming down here for. Pastor, please see with me. Please allow me to do as the Lord says. I love ladies. I have a passion for ladies. I have a soft spot for ladies. And I want to speak to ladies. I don't know who would be here today. Thank God for the men. Thank God we have one man over here added last week. And we have brother Sean down here and the other young men. Thank God for the men. But ladies, God is seeking a long-term commitment. Amen. A long-term commitment. Amen. I'm going to allow him. Did you hear me pray? Yeah. I'm going to allow him to say what he has to say. Yeah. Amen. A long-term commitment. Yeah. I look up the meaning of long-term. I wrote it down. I look up the meaning of commitment and I wrote it down and the Lord said, give a testimony. I don't know your name. Sister, over there on the beach, I'm addressing you. I'm not attacking you. I'm addressing you. The Lord has brought me. What is your name, sis? Natalie. Sister Natalie. The Lord has brought me a mighty long way. A mighty long way. I made sure I calculated this morning. I'm not saying that I never failed him along the way. Anybody who never failed him along the way, put up hand. Show hand if you have never failed him along the way. 49 years and counting. And the Lord has Amen. kept me. The Lord, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. It is His grace that brought me, saved us far, and grace will lead me on. I was praying this morning, and the Holy Spirit tell me, it is His grace, and it is His mercy that has kept me. And you know what the Holy Spirit tell me? Your last name is Mercy. We know Sister Taylor again, Sister Taylor. Call me Sister Mercy. Call me Sister Mercy, Sister Taylor. When you say me, call me Sister Mercy. I've had a name change. I said to Alexa this morning. I've had a name change. I said, Sister, I preached Sister Alexa. I said, when God made Jacob, 
Jacob could not go. He had to get a name change. Yay. His name is Trickster. Sometimes we need to carry a good connotation. He needed a name change. And God called him Israel. And he was a father of nations. Yay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a name change. Mercy. Mercy rewrote my name. I wish I could sing a solo. I wish I could sing this morning. Mercy rewrote my name. I'm going to ask my sister to sing it. Some sisters here afterward. Mercy rewrote my name. I can't tell you what I've been through. I don't know for what reason yesterday evening when I was sitting here and praying, things just got flowing back. Start flowing back. Sometimes I said, what are you doing? Oh, you did do it. In six years, I lost both parents. I lost my husband. And I lost my mother-in-law and my father-in-law and my uncle in six in six years. And I buried them all. This is so much here, she could read records. I had to orchestrate all those funerals and bury them in six years and see here standing for God. After all that was over, it started a night in the past. I tell people to all that and say, no, God, too much, too much. But he moves some things out of the way. When you see some things moving out your way, thinking not strange, concerning some things that are happening to you, he has to shift around things. He had to shift. If my husband was here, I used to come to church. And I used to take part. But the level of dedication was not there. Because it had to be split. My God. The commitment had to be split. Because the Bible tells you, you honor your husband. Some things have to be shifted out of the way. Mighty God. Mighty God. I remember. One, when I was at my work and I was going through it, and I was every minute I go to my principal and my other co worker, I said, This happened my day. That happened my day. They know everything. They know when my husband made accident. They know when I cut off your foot. They know when one eye I went blind. They know when I had to be pushing in the wheelchair. And one co worker will call in the name, look at me and say, Boy, and when you do, make it a good show all of them. And when you do, I never answer. I never do anything. See, they ask Job, what did you do, Job? I must see you do. I want to tell you, I want to tell somebody here today, you don't do nothing wrong. Terrible. 
Where's my husband died? And testimony to Lord to know what he did to my dad and preaching. Was he living at the roundabout in a very big house up there? Very, very big. When we got my room up on the end and it's down the other room down there, I could take the phone and phone him out in bed. After the burial, I said, Alisa, we have to move out of this. And we can't afford it. The whole of salary, this to pay for it. And we look at the apartment. I said, we went in like with your camp. I gave her the half of the furniture. And he said, I'm not talking the truth, say. I gave her the half of the furniture. I did the things pack up in the boxes. I said, we are pretty good men. Live like we are camp. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. I hope it's encouraging somebody. I hope it's encouraging somebody. Yeah. Encouraging somebody because I never had a source of income apart from what I was getting, and teacher never used to get enough money. And my two daughters were in university. And I never know, say, we never know, say, I feel me did exercise, you know. I will be look back now, sister, babe. I said, my God, you don't have faith there. Faith. Go to work every day. I go to work. Thank God he made me a strong person. I'm not a sickly person. I'm not, no flu no lick me over. I'm not a sickly person. He made me strong. And I praise him every day for how he has kept me. God has kept me. He will keep you. You will not go under. Having done all, stand. Romans 12, verse. Romans 1. Is Romans 1? Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. And do not become entangled again. In the yoke of bondage. No go back in a bondage. No go back in a bondage. No go back in a bandage. It's hard if you come out. It's hard if you come out. I'm talking from experience. Don't go back in bondage. Hold on to God. Hold on to God. There is much in God. There is much in God. Hold on to the liberty that he has given you and do not become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God has kept me. When my husband died, all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose. But I have fought my way through. I have Fought my way through. You see me, you come here and say, all time shoot when they make out a board. When you see it on TV, in a some, some long time show, a board they used to make, and this is what came in my prayer this morning. They used to use board to make the all time shoot them. And they would tar it on the inside, they call it pitch. And they would pitch it on the outside with tar. Why? That water must go in. I want all board this one. Hey. This is an old ship that has weathered many storms. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. When the storms come, he rock me go. And he rock me come. But thank God for the names of Olive and the young men who are in my life. They are the ones who pray me through. They are the ones who pray me through. I've been through many storms. Many storms. Hear me standing here. Trust them. Trust them. If you haven't started, trust God. Trust God. You can't make it alone on your own. 
You can't make it on your own. You can't make it on your own. Trust God. Trust God. What is a commitment? What is a commitment? When you gave your heart to the Lord and entered water baptism, you made a commitment. Brother, our brother, Christ, Christ, you have made a commitment. When you stand up here in water baptism last week and show us that you accepted God, it's a commitment. Let me tell you something. My God, that is, you know. Let me tell you about him. I told him I'm fasting. I don't know when I gave my heart to the Lord. Just like these little ones. We were brought up in Sunday school and church and a Christian family. And from we could speak, they start teaching us to pray. My parents, we had family devotion. Sister Roach knew them. And we have to kneel down and they tell us what to say. They always say, come and give your heart to the Lord. We wonder how we're going to give our heart in here to the Lord. But we obey them. And you know what I what commitment I made when it was a commitment I made? I said, God, anytime I graduate from college, I'm going to serve you completely. Total commitment. I graduated in 1975. 1975, that was about June or July. And the same July. We had a crusade here with Pastor Errol Wright. And he said, all who want to baptize, and the name, come and baptize. And I was in the pool baptized. It's afterward, it's the other day, we remember. But we said, well, God, I have said it. When you make a commitment to God, you write it down. Hallelujah. The minute I left college, I baptized, I baptized and started serving the Lord and working for him in the ministry. What commitment did you make? I think this question was asked the last time that I gave a word. What have you committed to God? A commitment is a pledge, a vow, a promise. Ask yourself, what did I commit to God? We are committed to our job. Am I telling the truth? You are supposed to be there by 8 o'clock. And if anybody catch you up the bus stop or the taxi stand, <laughs> make your walk faster. What are you adding? What are you adding? You're supposed to reach before 8. Mighty God in heaven. Pastor, go and write it down. You must set it down. Our commitment to the job. Say it am I talking the truth? You make sure you get a taxi by 7.30 because you have your own busy and the taxi they're going to be slow. My God want to see little something like that. I come in my house. Little hears. Mighty God. He wants to see us running for a ministry. He wants to see us committed. Yeah. He wants a long-term commitment. Long-term means in the stop along the way. It goes on and on and on. Amen. The commitment, it does not expire. He said that we are to be faithful, and if we are faithful to the end, we will receive what? A crown of life. I don't know what to the end. If we are faithful, first he said, what are your plans? What plans did you make when you started out? What is your plan? How did you plan to serve God? What course of action did you plan in serving God? 
You have to ask, answer, you have to answer your own question. Ask yourself and answer your question. What did I plan to do? Planning helps us to be accountable for what we do. People who work with government and other private sector, you have meetings, whether monthly or quarterly. Am I telling the truth? You have to have meetings. And when they call meetings, what they are going to do? Review the month that has passed. See whether the objectives have been met and plan for the other month coming. If it's a month by month planning. Amen. God, what have we planned for Jesus? What have we planned for Jesus? What have you planned to do with him? What do you plan to do for him? Think about it. What are your plans? And I'm asking myself to, you know, planning is important. Anybody don't think planning is important? You can put up your hand. God plan. Did you know God plan? Imagine God. He plans. In Jeremiah 29 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Imagine. God Almighty has plans, sister Hilda. My plan, you know how we plan, you know? He's the God who created the earth. He can snap his finger and make things happen. Yet he has a plan for my life. He said, I have a plan for you. A good plan. He said, it's a good plan. A plan to prosper you and not to harm you. I plan to give you a hope and a future. God has your future plan. Ask him about it. Amen. Uh -huh. Mighty God. On a youth plan for your future. Ask God what are his plans for your future. When I was young, I used to plan for my future. I want to accomplish this and I want to accomplish that. I remember when I said I want to go to college and I remember when I said I want to learn to drive and I want to do this. I did every course on the sun that I could set my eyes upon. And it was time in the band was saying, you should have asked God. You understand. Ask God, young people. What does he have planned for you? Bring back Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Young people, take it. When you are praying, you must pray the word back to him now. Pray the word of God. Pray to him. God, and you say you have a plan for me, and I want to know the plans. No. No matter go with any Santa Monas prayer. Dear Lord, you, I know you are the Supreme God and you do this. You want to talk in like Daddy, like when Josh and come to Daddy and say, Come here, Daddy. You want to know what you have for me, Daddy. Where you going to give me and so on. She not coming no pretty miss, Pastor. She want to hear what you have to say. Ask God, what are his plans? If I had known in those days, some decisions I had made, I would not have made them. Amen. But I never knew better Amen. that I should have asked him and asked his direction. And he has a way of confirming his plans. You drop it in your spirit. And then after I drop it in your spirit, test him then. Test him, say, God, if that is really you, let daddy come and say it to me. Because he never hear me a praise. And then he come and say, no, say nothing. Think of another somebody who don't know about your business. And say, God, show it to so and so. And make him come and tell me. Just come and tell me, say. Not even that the Lord say. They might just say, what do you think about what do you think about going abroad to college, Jesus? A person just come and say, 
And you say, oh God, that is you. And that is what you drop in my spirit. That is confirmation. Plan with God. The Lord is asking today, what are your plans concerning him? What can you tell him to be? He's waiting for an answer. He's waiting for an answer. After planning, preparation. 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 When you were going to university, you had to prepare. You couldn't go give her right down your name. Let me ask you, come bring your documents. What have you passed accomplished? Preparation is necessary in the secular world. So what about in the service of the king? A PMP service we give in. You want to know what the preparations are? Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. That's the preparation for the believer. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Not everybody knew about heart. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray should I repeat it? And see my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their land. You have any land you want the Lord to heal? I have some, you know, I want the Lord to heal it. Not the literal land. Your life, the situations, God can heal them. Preparation involves. Four things I stated in that verse. First is humility. We can't humble ourselves, we can't follow God. If we are too full of ourselves, you know, the other day I was I was speaking some time ago and it dropped in my spirit. I said, that person is so full of themselves, they are running over. You know, you're full of cup till you run over. Brother Sean, they're so full of themselves, they are run over. In a disaster. Humility. To follow God, it requires humility. It requires prayers. I put the S on prayer. On the one prayer we pray. Prayers and supplication. It's in the scripture, Ephesians 6. Pray with all kinds of prayers. And supplication. Supplication means begging, pleading, crying for it. God now will push things in your hands so you want to become a supplicate. Prayers. I pray one time and say, no, no. You know, see, you know, come to God and hear me. The Bible says you are to seek. Seek with what? All of your heart. A holy prayer. A holy heap of praying, you know. A praying that. Lie down on the belly and supplicate to God. That's preparation. Seek his face. When I've been praying, you come at church and pray and they happy before the believers and they ask us to pray. No, I'm talking about the secret place. The secret place. God wants a little secret place with you and me. Same thing for me. When I say you and me, all of us. God requires a secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. The Bible tells us about the secret place. You know what I like about God? He tells us when we're going to pray, we're going to lock up in a one. Go lock up in a one. And sometimes we don't want people to hear where we are. Praise Sister Palmer. We don't want church people to hear with business. We don't want the husband to hear and your children. And when they, when they call you, they dry your eye. Because they're going to ask you where you are crying for. Secret place prayers. God wants from believers. Secret. We don't want pastor to hear. 
You know, that's why sometimes we pray and pray in our tongues. We don't know where I mean, but it's going straight up. That's a straight connection. Nothing can intercept. That's a straight connection with God. What do you want? You want the Holy Spirit? Ask him in secret. You want a spouse? Ask him in secret. You want a better job? Ask him in secret. Out of the blue, somebody come to you and say, you know, anybody want this kind of work? And I think you do. Ask him in secret. And the last point on the preparation is turn. Turn. I write about turn. Turn. Wednesday, come. The Lord move mightily in this place. He's asking for repentance. He's asking for repentance. Repentance. Repentance is not for unsaved alone. There are many things that we need to repent from. He's asking for repentance. We have some little secret sin. We have some little unrighteousness. Some little bad habits. We have some little selfish behavior. He wants us to repent. That is preparation. Repentance. Ask God to empty you. Ask Him to empty you. I might have a bad habit and I don't realize. Empty me, Lord. Empty me. Make me humble. Make me humble. We must humble ourselves sometimes on everything we must have a problem with. It's not everything must make affect our spirit. Humble yourself and the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due season. Humility. 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 Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Another well known verse. Said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. You are doing? Say it with me now. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. By the mercies of God, that He present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that He may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? You will put it by Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. We can go on. Present ourselves a living sacrifice. Holiness. Holiness. It's requirement of the believer. Live holy. Walk holy. We must look different from the unbeliever. And I don't mean in the way we, we put on the makeup or we, we appear. I mean, it must come from within. Holiness must come from within. It's an attitude. Holiness is an attitude. Make them say it to holy, holy, so what? Let them say it to righteous, righteous, so what? Holiness must come from within. If it's coming from within, you don't have to worry about the outside, you know, because you will match the outside with the inside. Verse 2 says, renew your mind. The mind is what controls us. Renew our minds that controls us. And not to become conformed to this word. If we're not careful, we will adapt to the word. Because the influence of the word out there is powerful. It drags. It drags against believers. 
especially the young ones. Not bashing young people. We just telling you what out here. The world can't come in your combat and we all want in here. Because they're not going to come in your combat and we can't go gang and jump around them and tell them, pity their heart to the Lord. You understand? I see in tongues and frighten them. But the young people out here, you have to rub shoulder to shoulder with the unbeliever in the workplace and in college and in school. Be transformed. Don't be conformed to the word. Conforming you adapt to the word. You hug the word. You do what the word say. When you talk about out of the joke, you laugh. My mother says, cry excuse. When you go cry excuse. Cry excuse and move away. You remember something good you have to do quickly. That conversation is not for you. Those movies are not for you. They ask you to not come watch that movie. You say, what kind of movie? No, sir. No, sir. There's something very pressing to do. You have to preach to them. Cry excuse. You have to preach to them. Excuse yourself away. Be not conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Set your mind on things above. Set your affection on things above and not on things of this earth. When you talk or can someone go on, you are think of something different. You are among them, but you are not of them. Is it by me I'm talking? You see the Bible, you know, and I'm making up, and I'm making it up among them, but not of them. Discipline. Discipline, believer. I'm talking about the preparation and the, and the um, perseverance, all in one. Perseverance. Discipline. You go somewhere to work. Make sure you reach 10 or 5 minutes before the hour. Don't run in late every day because you have to go witness to them. And they say, what kind of Christian are they Christian this? Let me give you a name. You know what I'm saying? Let me call you late Christian. I know the teeth, the time. Lord have mercy. Some people teeth. Not necessarily excuse so you're sick when you're not sick. My God. And when it's written, drop it in. Yeah. I read that story one time, somewhere or other. When some man in the excuse or tell, when he got to ask the excuse, the person, the boss said, oh, who they know? Yeah. Are you granted a long time? Every minute somebody is dead and one time off. That must not be named among the believers. Amen. Speak the truth. Amen. You have a little business to attend to. They don't have to know what the business is. Tell them you have a little personal business to attend to. Don't tell a lie. And when you want to have the truth, God will you favor you now. Fear for God will favor you. Amen. Sometimes the boss will say, is, it, is it anything I can help with? I used to have a boss. He used to love when you come and tell him your business, what is wrong. You want, you want to get a time out for religion? Just go to him and say, boss, I need your help, you know. Truth is here, truth. Yes, sir. I have to go do this, I do that. Okay, then, see you, okay. When you come back, everything all right? You want to know what your business Nothing wrong with that. Be truthful. The believer must be truthful. If you're not pleased about something, speak up or forever hold your peace. Speak up or forever hold your peace. Don't go and drop wood. Don't go and so 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 with the other unbelievers. Speak up or forever hold your peace. Persevere, brothers and sisters. Persevere I mean continuing. Whatever you're doing, despite difficulties, I'm talking about persevere for God. You know. Despite failures, you will fail exams sometimes. 
take you over. If God is in it, you know, you have to worry, take you over. You may have opposition, maybe and they oppose. You may see the leader of the opposition side of the party. Everything the other side says, no matter how we good and right, they try to find something opposing. And because they need opposition, and we have opposition in church, no matter how it is good that is planned, they try to find a fault with it. And they say, if you will work, mighty God, mighty God. Don't mind opposition. A God you serving. A God you serving. A God you committed to. And it's long term commitment. And you have to be answerable. You are going to have to be answerable. And I want you believe that. That and I say, God, I don't know why this scripture came. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, a very popular, well-known scripture. Put on the whole armor of God. When you, at night time, when you go from work frustrated, find Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18. Put on, see if you need one of your armor, and that's, you see that when you have one word. You figure, you know, sometimes when people forget, they call that to one. You understand? Are they forget the hard heart when they do wait for the job? Are they forget that they, them boots? Check your weapon in the morning. God. Check your weapon before you leave. Check your armor. Check your armor. There's so many pieces in the armor. It's five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Check your armor before you leave. The first one is truth. Next one is righteousness. Peace. There are the peace you can get hard to follow. The peace and be with all men if it's possible. That's what is you know, easy, you know. When people rub you the wrong way, remember one of your armor is peace. On a soft, you soft, and peace. On a what list, you what list is peace. Is peace you peaceful? It's a part of your armor when you're not traced back. Sometimes you cry. I said, she's sad because you are crying. And because you can't, you are Christian, you're supposed to be cursed or trees. The best thing for Christian is tears. Yes, a part of your weaponry is tears. Cry. Yeah, it's not crying. Cry. One of my friends, she's an Adventist Christian. I always talk about her. She said that is one of the armor oh God give women to fight with. She said, You can't cry. You can't cry. She complained to her. She said, Cry, this is crying. If you want something from somebody, cry. Then you so cry. I hit up a bread them. Eh? On a tree, I a bread them. Eh? A tears. Tears is a weapon. The Bible said tears is a language. Tears is a weapon. If I do see a son or something, I should cry before she leave here. When I go home, it will kill me. You look at the phone and call her and say, Sister Sandra, you know what I mean? mean to make you cry. Because tears is a weapon, Sister Sandra. It's a weapon of peace. Tears is a weapon of peace. Faith. Put on salvation. People must know say you're saved. They must not be asked. They must know. As they say, I say, I guess you know, say you're a Christian. And you wonder, say, how holy, holy, may you holy, holy, are what? Come here, I'm a long week. I'm in makeup. This is I'm a fingernail and all of that. As I see you, you know, say you're a Christian. You go, you dress up, but then you know, say you're a Christian. I saw my emanate from inside. I look at the glory. I sure. Mighty God. Put 
Put on salvation. Put on salvation. Carry the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Walking, you know, you know, sometimes the person actually walking by when I mean, face walking up, you know, so going to shine. I will testify because it's a walk with the word of God. You know, first time we be kind of ignorant, Pastor. So there's a walk with the word of God. You have a testimony you know, in your back pocket, or up here, or something. You can't even read it, you know, but you carry the word of God. Are we having a handbag? I have it on my handbag. Okay. The word was the inside here, Amen. in here, right on the big bed. Everybody can read. If I call on you to read, now we read because we can read. We learn to read. And we show the book and put it down. When you read, ask the Lord. This written word is known as the Logos. You hear the word Logos? L O G O S, the written word? Logos. But when you read the word, and the Holy Spirit gives you the revelation and the word upon your heart. It becomes a rainbow. So when you read the word, ask God. God, I don't understand that scripture. Then. Make it a rainbow word upon my heart. Make it a totally blue. You might be praying or something. And you say, whoa. I never know that was what that word means. The Holy Spirit may break it into a ray my word upon your heart. I'm going to stop here. I have a lot here. A lot, but I'm going to stop. I don't want to be you nor bore you. But put on the whole armor. Who where does the armor come from? From where do we get the armor? It is the armor of God. That's what the Bible says. The armor of God. Don't wear two pieces and left two pieces of You know, some people tell me that take out my shoes and trace or take out the ears ring and fight. All pieces must be worn or else you will be defenseless. If you don't have on all the pieces, you will be defenseless. You will be attacked by the enemy and the enemy can bring you down. The enemy can break us. Just come say one wrong word, talk to him. And you say, I only say to. I only say to. But I do it find our trees because we need the peace and the armor of the world. Wear and carry the whole armor every day and every night. The whole armor of God. What was this song again, sister? When I get there, when I get there, I will just what the Lord has given me. I have it in you. Okay? When I get there, when we all get to Him, then I have not completed all that I have here, but we are all working to go there. Can we all stand? Can we all stand and the arm praise and worship you When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we We don't be there. We're 
for me to, to give your offering to the Lord? Wow. This is what the Lord is saying to us today. We are committed to Him. And we need to show it, not just say it. Amen. Action. Not a bag of mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless that. I want to remind you as we pray that the leaders, please remember, we, we stay back after church for a few minutes as we run through this calendar. Um, and the, 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 the children's group, Sister Althea, want to meet with all the children also right afterwards. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you first in this afternoon for our dear Sister Taylor. That you have spoken in our spirit. That you have downloaded your word. And God, as she has given out, out of her experience, the things you have brought her through, she took us back to the memory lane of the day when she uh, accepted and committed to you. God, after many years, she's still following you. I pray that that commitment for those of us who are here, who are not serving you, as I even reflect on my own, that we are following you and it's a daily commitment. We pray that you will help us, Lord. Give us strength. I pray for all of us who are Christians today as we are thinking of our commitment to you. We are also thinking of the resources you have given to us. God, are we using it for you? Oh, God. As I heard somebody pray this week and the person said, God, stir that person who you stir their heart to give but them still holding on to it. I pray today that they will be freedom. Yes, Lord. Free them, Jesus. Free them for work. Free them to serve. Free them to give. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, some of us, if you should evaluate us, you know that we would be mocked down so much. But I beg of you, you are a merciful God. And as our sister stretched it, mercy, mercy, Lord. Have mercy upon us today, we pray. We pray that as our walk increase, as our faith increase with you, as our strength increase, I thank you. For those arts that you are preparing to go and study. For those of us who have not been joining Bible studies. I pray that some of us don't even like going online. But serving you is what we are called to. And so as we do your studies, as we come together as a church and pray, as we talk to you, I pray for that strength. I pray that we will make it our priority. Yes, Lord. We make it our priority just as though we make work our priority. That we are punctual and that we are efficient in what we do. We pray that we will use the same vigor and vitality in living for you and doing what you want of us. Do it through us, we pray today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we close for those persons, you have committed your life to the Lord, or you have not. This is your opportunity. And I won't go today without making room for that space for you. You may say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and make me your child. Thank you for dying for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for forgiving my sins. 
and making me your child. Please, Lord Jesus, help me to follow you until you return or call to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have said that prayer continuously, I know that Sister um, Taylor tells us she said it many times. But once you said it, God hears. And to follow through what you're from. Hallelujah. Love so much. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from Thank you.